Welcome along to part three of our video tutorial series where we're learning how to create an endless runner game using Python code. In our first two videos, we got as far as making a fairly cool looking backdrop. We've got this little animated bat in the sky flying around. We've got the moon, some haunted houses, the black sky itself, and the brown ground for our zombie to run on. Okay, in this third installment, we will be bringing our main character, which is the zombie, into the game. We'll be animating her so it looks like she's running, and we will also make her jump up and down. Okay, so to get started on bringing this zombie into our game, let's have a quick squeeze in your images folder. And you'll see that there are 10 images of the zombie. And there's 10 images because it's an animated zombie. Okay, so it starts at walk number one, and we're going to code it up so that we'll just run through these images very quickly to make it look as if our zombie is running. Okay, so that's why we've got 10 images there. Okay, back over in our um, Python editor, what I want you to do is scroll down and find this section here just above the update function where we coded up the bat. We're going to make a bit of room below that because that's where we're going to code up our zombie. So make a comment that says zombie. And it's going to be coded up in a fairly similar way, a similar way to what we've done already with the other um, actors in our game. So we're going to make a variable called zombie. And we are going to set the first image in our list here. So walk one. Um, we're going to attach that to the zombie variable. So zombie equals actor, and then in quotation marks and brackets, you'll want to write walk one. And close off your quotation marks and brackets. The next thing we'll do is set our x and y coordinates for this zombie. So zombie.x equals and zombie.y y equals now remember the x-axis is your horizontal plane so uh, running left to right we want to move our zombie just a little bit in from the left hand side of the screen so i'd say about 100 pixels across the x-axis would look good so that will be your x position and for your y position how far down the page do you want to put the zombie well we want it close to the bottom the bottom is 600 pixels so i'm going to think well, i'm thinking about 470 pixels down will look good now to test that out to see if our zombie does look good in that location, you will need to go to the bottom into the draw section here and draw the zombie onto the page. So just write zombie.draw and open and close a set of brackets. That'll just um, draw it onto the page for us and we can check out its position. Looks pretty good to me. If you want to adjust her at all, by all means go for it by changing the X and Y values there, but I'm happy with where that zombie is standing. Okay, so the zombie's standing there. What we want to do next is get her animated to make it look as if she is walking or running on the spot. So we're going to need to make a list that contains all of those 10 images that we saw a moment ago. So I'm going to make a list called zombie.images, and the way we make a list is use square brackets. And we need to make a list of all 10 images. It's a bit tedious to write it all out, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and do a copy and paste job. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm just going to rename all those. Um, so the first one will stay as it is, walk 1. But the next one will be walk 2, walk 3, walk 4, walk 5, walk 6, all the way up to 10. So 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so we've now got those 10 images from our images folder, walk 1 through to walk 10, stored inside this list called zombie.images. Now to get the animation working, so to get the computer actually running through those 10 images and displaying it on our screen, we need to go down to the update function. I'm going to make a section here for the zombie using a bit of a fancy comment. And all we need to do, there's a couple of ways we could do this, we could do zombie animate and that's the way we did the bat just here oops spot that wrong if we test that though you'll notice a bit of an issue with our zombie she's running in slow motion now I guess you could go up here and change the frames per second like we did with the bat so zombie.fps and bump that up a bit to I don't know let's try 30 we'll see what that comes in at Um, oh, I forgot the equals sign. We don't do brackets. So it's zombie.fps equals. And we'll try 30 frames per second. Okay, that speeds her up a little bit. Um, maybe if we go 60 frames per second. 
That's probably going to be too fast. Oh, that's not too bad. So you get the idea on how we can adjust her speed. There is another way we can do it though. We can get rid of that frames per second and we can get rid of that animate function and instead we can simply write zombie.nextImage and we just put an underscore between next and image there. That's a function built into Pygame Zero that will also get your zombie animated. Okay, so it's up to you what you use there. I'm going to go with um, zombie.nextImage just to show you that there is a different way that you can run through the um, images in your animation. Okay, but whatever way suits you, go for it. Okay, so we've got our zombie animated. It looks like she is running, which is good. The next thing we want our zombie to do is um, jump in the air when we press the up arrow on our keyboard. So we need to do that using an if statement. I'll put a comment in first uh, that just says jump in the air when the up arrow is pressed. All right, so I'm going to start with the if statement, like I said before. So if keyboard dot up, that's just saying if we press the up arrow on our keyboard, what do we want our zombie to do? Well, we're going to change its um, velocity and we haven't set up the velocity variable just yet. So back outside of this update function underneath where we set up this zombie stuff here, we're going to create a new variable called velocity. Okay, and velocity, um, it's going to be equal to zero to start with because our um, zombie is not jumping anywhere just yet. But as our zombie moves through the air, that velocity, that number is going to change. Okay, so I guess we could probably put a comment there. Um, how fast our zombie moves in the up or down direction. Okay, I don't think we need to write because it's on zero. That's just because our game is starting it on zero because we don't want it jumping just yet. Um, so if our keyboard dot up is pressed, then we're going to change that velocity. We're going to say um, Velocity oops, equals minus 18. So if we move into the negatives and change our velocity into the negatives, okay, that's going to help our um, zombie move up in the air. All right, it's not going to move just yet because we need to put one more line of code in. We we'll just need to write zombie dot y. So that's the y axis equals zombie dot y plus the velocity. So it moves at minus 18 pixels or places in the air when we press that up arrow. Um, the only thing we need to add now to get this working is we need to make this velocity variable a global variable. If we were to run that now we'd get an error. Okay, it says velocity is referenced, the local variable velocity is referenced before assignment. So at the moment, velocity is a local variable. We can't update it inside of this function as well as have it outside of the function. If we want to access it outside the function update and update it in here, then we need to make it a global variable. So inside the update function, just write global velocity. And that makes it a global variable now, which means we can now update this velocity um, variable inside any function within our program. Let's give that a run and we'll see what happens. Okay, so she's animated. We press the up arrow and off she goes. She takes off into the sky. So yes, our velocity is working. It's working a bit too well at the moment. We need something to pull her back, something that will pull her back down to the ground. And that magic trick will be gravity. So what we're going to do is jump back up here where we set the velocity and now we're going to set the gravity. And we're going to start by setting the gravity to 1. Um, the gravity will basically change our velocity. So I'm going to put that in a comment here. Gravity will change our velocity. The bigger the number here, the more gravity there is in our game, the more pull it's going to have um, on bringing our player back down. So I'll just write, the bigger the number, the more pull towards the ground. Okay, so now back down in our update function, we might add a little bit more code here to get a bit of gravity pulling our zombie back towards the ground. So we're going to write 
velocity equals velocity plus gravity. Okay, so whatever the gravity is, it's going to be um, pulling our zombie back down towards the ground. Now, when I test this, you're not really going to see it. Um, the gravity is going to come into effect straight away and pull our zombie straight off the page. So have a quick look. You would have just saw her head pop up and then she just fell off the page because she um, has gravity now pulling her down, 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 down. So what we need to do is tell her to stop moving off the page when she's in this position here. So that initial position we set for her was 470. So we don't want the zombie to go anywhere lower than 470. So we're going to have to put in a little bit more code here. Uh, so it's going to be stop the zombie falling off the page. Off the screen is probably a better word to use. Okay, so the way we stop our zombie falling off the screen, we just write another if statement. So if zombie.y, so if it's y position, is greater than 470 pixels down the page, and that means it's fallen too far, so we have to stop the velocity. So we'll set that back to zero which means it'll stop moving it up or down. And we also want to set its value back to 470 on the y-axis. So zombie.y will equal 470. That way she's going to be stuck in that 470 position as the gravity pulls her back down, down the page. Um, so let's have a look and see if that works. Okay, so she's sitting on our, or standing on our page quite nicely now. If I press the up arrow, she goes up. Minus 18 in the air, and then comes back down. Okay, the issue I'm going to have now is if I do a double jump. So if I press the up arrow twice very quickly, she can jump very high. If I hold the up arrow down, she just disappears off the page. Okay, so what we need to do is fix that so you can't do a double jump. The only time we should be able to jump is when our feet are planted on the ground like this. So at position 470. So what we need to do is, back in this section here, if we press the up key, let's check to see if our feet are planted on the ground as well. So I'm going to write and zombie.y equals equals 470. Okay, so that's just checking to see if our y value is 470. And remember, we use two equal signs when we are testing something out. So in this case, we're testing to see if our zombie is standing at the 470 pixel mark. If she is, then she's fine to jump. If she's not, then she's not going to jump anywhere. Let's have a test run. Okay, so I'm pressing the up arrow very quickly there now, and she can't jump any higher like she did previously. If I hold the up arrow down, that's what happens. Okay, so our little zombie is jumping quite well now. Now, that's all the code we need to do for this video, but I want you to have a bit of a play around with a few of the variables. So one of the variables that we can play around with is the gravity. Okay, how much force is pulling um, our player back down towards the ground? At the moment it's at 1. If I press 2 for the gravity and run the game, have a look what happens. When I jump now, she can only do little jumps. We've got double the gravity now pulling her back towards the ground. If I put in a number like 5 for the gravity, She'll barely get her feet off the ground. Okay, so one is probably a good setting to have it on. You can even try it less than that. 0 0.5, for example, will probably make it look like she's walking on the moon. Okay, so that's just one jump. She just floats up in the air. Okay, so it looks a bit unrealistic. So I'm happy with um, having that gravity set at one. Something else you can play around with to um, affect how high your zombie jumps is the velocity down here. Okay, so it's set to minus 18. I thought that was a pretty good number for making a realistic looking jump. If you set that to something less, like minus 10, then that is going to prevent her from jumping as high in the air. She doesn't go up as high on the y-axis. If you set it to, say, minus 30, that's going to allow her to do bigger jumps. Okay, so have a play around with that velocity setting there. I'm going to leave it at minus 18, so I think that's the most realistic looking jump. By all means, you choose whatever you think is best. Other than that, we are done. Um, in the next video, we're going to bring a little ghost into the game that we can collect to get some points. Um, and 
What else will we do? I've got a little list of things that we're going to do. We'll also get our scoreboard working. Okay, so I'll catch you in that next video tutorial where we get the ghost and the scoreboard working. I'll see you then.